do with these programs. When I talk about Office software, the most basic type is operating systems. This is the actual program that runs your computer that access the, accesses files and launches programs. Uh, we also often talk about word processing for writing letters or emails, uh, talking about spreadsheets used for forms and calculations. Uh, I'll show you flowcharts when you want to draw a diagram or do mind mapping. I'll show you about how to make presentations like this uh, for slideshows. Uh, I'll show you how to use uh, project software when you need complex ordered lists for project management. Um, the most important really for Office is communication, email and instant messengers and other ways to contact people. And online meetings such as WebEx, NetMeeting, Skype and View that will allow you to meet people remotely and uh, get Office meetings done. Now first let's talk about operating systems. Uh, the types of operating systems you're probably familiar with is Windows, uh, OS X, which is used for Macintosh, Linux, and Unix. Personally, I am a Windows user, so I want to show you a few tips on how to uh, use Windows more effectively. First off is uh, using your desktop and shortcuts. Now, um, I have often worked at uh, big corporations where all the important files are buried in a network drive somewhere, maybe 10 folders down in drive X, and if you navigate to them every single time you need them, it will take a lot of time. A much quicker way to do this is to create a folder for your shortcuts uh, so that you can quickly access all your files. Now when I go to the desktop, I'll also show you uh, the more icons you have on your desktop, the more it will slow down your computer as every time you go to your desktop it has to draw all these little icons. Now here's a folder I created called Shortcuts and uh, this is where I like to put uh, shortcuts say for my office or for my job and we'll go down in here to my work folder and say I need to access uh, an, my employee handbook regularly. I can actually go in here, right click it, click create shortcut, and you'll see this little shortcut appeared at the bottom. I can now actually drag and drop that uh, to my shortcuts folder. It looks like I'm going to need to go back. So I'm actually, another way is I can cut this shortcut. And I'll just go back to my shortcut folder and I will paste it. And there we go. Now whenever I need my handbook, it's right on the desktop and I can just uh, go right down here to my shortcuts and access it. Now an even handier tool in Windows is the quick launch bar. Um, and this is down on the bottom right next to your start menu. Uh, if you're in Windows XP it gives you little tiny icons here and Windows 7 it gives you these much larger icons. What this is for is that if you uh, want to take these shortcuts you can actually drag them down onto your bar and uh, you can pin them here so that anytime you need that um, folder <coughs> it is right there and uh, ready to access. Um, really handy for uh, software. Um, when I've worked at corporations we may have three chat programs and all these office programs that I will uh, put down here in my quick launch bar uh, making it really fast for me to launch the program and again getting these icons off my desktop so it stops slowing down my computer. Uh, the start menu, a really good way to uh, use Windows is to reorganize your start menu. Um, if we go back here to my desktop and you look at the start menu, you'll see that all the programs are organized by the manufacturer, by the company that made them, and I really would prefer them to be organized by the type of program uh, that I'm using. So the way you do that is you can go to All Programs, right-click it, and click Open. Uh, we'll double go into Programs, and here is some of the folders that are in my start menu. Now what I like to do is create folders for the types of programs. Again, um, I'll create a folder for audio, a, a folder for pictures, a folder for video programs, and uh, probably most importantly, a folder for internet. So you can right click here, go to New, go to Folder, and I'm going to name this folder Internet. And there's a couple different types of internet software. I have my internet browsers, so I'm going to make another folder called Browsers. And then I'm going to make a folder called chat as I have several different chat programs and I might also put one in here for webcam um, since I often have different programs for my webcam. I'm going to close this down. Now notice when I go back into my start menu uh, you will see here is my internet folder with my browser chat and webcam uh, folders. Now I can actually go here and I'm going to grab Yahoo Messenger I'm going to drag it up here and I'm going to put it in this chat folder go move to chat unable to create folder chat 
Okay, well, it did not like that one. Let's move a different one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move, um, I have these Google apps, and here's Google Talk. This is uh, another chat program I like to use. I just put it down here, and we'll go with some of my browsers. Here's my Google Chrome. I'm going to put that right in the browser. Um, I'm going to also add Internet Explorer. I can drag that down to my browsers. Now when I'm done um, organizing my start menu, I'm not going to organize it all in this class, but when I'm done, I will usually only have about five folders in my start menu, and I can find everything really fast, as it will be all organized underneath the type of software and not who manufactures it. Now some really important shortcuts in Windows, um, I'm going to show you here. Uh, first is Control-Alt-Delete. You're probably familiar with this one anytime your computer locks up uh, or you have a program that's not working right. Now if you Control-Alt-Delete, you'll pull up the screen in Windows 7 or uh, it'll actually pull up the task manager in Windows XP. Uh, the first tab shows applications. These are all the programs that are running right now. So if you need an end of, end of program, you can just uh, click End Task and it will close that out. If your computer is locked up, you can go to Processes. And I usually will sort by CPU to see what program is using the most power. And here uh, is my recorder program that's actually recording this class or you can sort by memory and see which programs are taking the most memory um, and then if you click end process it will kill that program and uh, your computer a lot of times will uh, come back to life again uh... screen capture is also really useful especially if you have an error in a program that you need to send to a programmer or to your IT department or if you're just trying to capture something um, on your entire screen you can hit control alt and print screen which is uh, up on upper right hand side of your keyboard and what I do is I actually uh, I'll go down here and start Microsoft Paint and then I'll just paste my uh, screen in here so here's a a picture of the screen I just did of my PowerPoint um, I can actually capture this screen again and uh, now we have a window within a window um, and then you can actually crop it down to the size you want um, whatever your error is that you need to send out uh, to people so that is a really handy tip. Now if you do a lot of copying and pasting or moving files, trying to re rearrange things, it's really handy to know the shortcuts uh, to copy, which is control C, or to paste, which is control V, or undo things. Um, this works in almost every program. To control Z will undo your last uh, whatever change you made. Uh, if you do, uh, actually it's not control D, this is Windows D. It'll take you to your desktop. That's how I keep flipping to my desktop. Um, and also Windows E to get to your computer. So I have these two wrong and I will update those in the handout that's attached to this class. Now when I'm talking about the Office software, I really want you to keep in mind offline versus online. Now traditionally we have always worked with offline software uh, for Microsoft Office. Um, of course all the Office programs before the internet. Um, the nice thing about offline programs is that you can access them even when you don't have internet access. Uh, just a laptop and your office program and you can uh, start up and start working on your documents. Um, it's only accessible from one specific drive so that makes it uh, a lot more secure. You know where it's at, you know nobody's accessing it. Uh, you can share the file on an internal network so you can post it out on a network drive. Uh, you can also email it uh, if you need to share it online, um, but that's really the only way to share an offline document is to email it. Um, as I said, you can link to these documents if there's out on a network drive. You can send a link to people on the same network. Uh, there's a lot of support for offline programs. Microsoft Office has been around a very long time, so it's familiar to most people. Uh, a huge problem, of course, with offline programs is if your hard drive goes bad or the file gets corrupted, uh, that file is gone. You've lost it and there's really no way to re get your work back. Um, if you send the file out to somebody else and they don't have the same program, they can't open the file. And sometimes that's even with the same program. If you send a uh, Microsoft Word 2010 document to somebody who's using uh, Microsoft Word 1997, they're not going to be able to open the file. Um, and then also files will display dis differently in different programs. So if you send me a Word file and I open it up in uh, OpenOffice or somewhere else, it may not show up the same. 
Now, online um, also has uh, many good good things and bad things about it. Uh, first thing is that it's accessible on the internet from any computer. It doesn't matter where you are. If you uh, do your office work to an online program, um, you can go log into your phone afterwards or go to a friend's house and use their computer. Uh, so the second point I have is you can access it on your smartphone. That's really handy uh, if you are a traveling uh, business person and constantly need to look at things that you're working on in the office. Uh, you don't have to worry about your computer crashing. If your computer crashes and you are working on an online document, um, it will all still be there, still be online. Uh, you might just lose whatever the very last change is uh, when your computer crashed. It's also really easy to share online documents as long as uh, the people you're working with have internet access. And you can control the access. You can give um, specific people rights to get into your documents and either just look at them or edit them. Um, there's also lots of very specific tools online that will uh, make things easier. For instance, you can make a quiz in Microsoft Word, but there are actually really simple programs online that will create quizzes for you, and then you don't have to fight with the formatting and trying to get pictures in and all that. Uh, the programs will be much more specific to your use. Uh, now, some problems with online is that if you want to attach an online document to an email, you have to send them a link. And of course, if they're offline or their internet's down or the website is down, um, they will not be able to get to the file. Uh, another big problem is that there's not much familiarity um, by users uh, using online programs. So there's not a whole lot of support if you're using it in an online program. But they're all uh, very easy to use and, and rather uh, intuitive. So first, let's talk about word processors. Um, the biggest one people know about is Microsoft Word or maybe Microsoft Works, which kind of has Word uh, tied into it. Another common one is OpenOffice Write, and OpenOffice is a open source program, so it's free to everyone. You can download it for free, where Microsoft Word uh, costs money. You need to buy the Microsoft Office package. And then there's also Google's offering, which is Google Docs, um, an online office program. And uh, there's a really good one out there for creating quizzes called Quizinator.com. And another really uh, common word processor is WordPad. It's on every single Windows. And if you don't have Microsoft Word, you at least have WordPad, which will help you to write letters and emails. Some main features of word processing is that uh, you can format your words. You can bold, italic, change the size of the words. Um, you can also embed images and graphs into your document. Um, so you can have graphs and, and kind of tell a story or, or uh, give a dialogue. And then uh, word processing usually has spell check as well. So if you make any spelling mistakes, you can fix it. And usually has mail merge, which allows you to use a spreadsheet to, say, pull up a list of addresses and insert them into letters. Uh, so you don't have to write a thousand letters. You can just write one letter and then do a mail merge to have it sent out to every person on your list. Now I'm going to show you just real quick um, a little bit uh, of a text document. Now this is OpenOffice. As I said, this is an open source program. You can get it at op openoffice.org. And one thing I want to reiterate is that all of these programs are very, very similar. There's not a whole lot of difference between OpenOffice uh, Writer, which is right here. And you can see at the top we have our file and edit and various uh, uh, formatting things. I'm going to switch over here to Microsoft Word. Now you see it's it's uh, a little bit different. It's a little prettier, but it is the exact same functions. Um, still have bold and all of our formatting and everything. And uh, I'll hop over here actually to Google Documents as well. And let's see. Um, here we are in Google Documents, and I'll create a new document. And again, there again the exact same. Here's all your your formatting. So uh, whatever you want to write. <coughs> you can put in here and then you can change that highlight it make it bold or italic underline it change the color um, whatever you need there's also a lot of times tools in here to help you create certain types of programs especially in uh, Microsoft Word there's things to help you build resumes or uh, write lists um, whatever you need now um, one thing I do want to just show you is that uh, I like to use Google Documents for things like my shopping list um, a lot of times I write out my shopping list while I'm at home and then when I go to the grocery store I'll pull out my phone and access my shopping list on Google Docs and just see what I had typed on my computer. 
uh, it's a lot easier for me than writing down a list and crossing it off and everything. Um, and I can also share this with other people. If I was sending somebody else shopping, I could send them a link to this uh, program so they could go and uh, buy what I need them to buy. Okay, let's move on here. Next I'm going to talk about spreadsheets. Now spreadsheets are really what made computers uh, what they are today. Uh, businesses got into spreadsheets because they automatically add up um, numbers. So uh, you can do automatic calculations. You don't have to worry that you added something wrong. You just have to type the number in there correctly and make sure you make your formula right. The most uh, common is Microsoft Excel for spreadsheets. Um, it's used by just about every corporation I've ever worked at. Um, but some alternatives are also OpenOffice. They have one called Calc and uh, Google has one called Google Spreadsheets. The key features of a spreadsheet is that uh, it has columns and rows where you uh, can add numbers, put column headers, um, and, and put different types of formulas. Uh, you can format your different columns, so you can bold things, change their colors, color the cells. Uh, you can put calculations to automatically um, add up different columns or even pull numbers from other spreadsheets. Uh, for doing reporting especially. At one job I was able to automate a report that took my boss uh, about two weeks to make and with Excel I was able to automate it completely so that this report would generate just by opening up the spreadsheet. Uh, you can also add graphs and charts into an Excel. It will take a, a bunch of numbers and it can generate pie graphs and bar graphs and other sorts of graphs um, to uh, show people your data visually. Now let's just uh, show you real quick uh, what a spreadsheet looks like and um, some basic operations of it. Now again I'm gonna go to um, Google Documents here. I'm uh, really a big fan of Google Documents and let's see cancel let's get out of this and Google Documents I'm gonna create a spreadsheet. Now as I said in a spreadsheet you have your uh, columns here going up and down uh, named A, B, C, D, E, F, G and your rows which will number one through uh, 66,000 or something like that and uh, what I often do is you go in here and you can put in your header and I'll put it in another header so you can classify uh, what each column is hey, yet another header and you can grab the columns and stretch them so they're whatever size you need same thing with the rows uh, you can grab a row and stretch it if you want it to be bigger or smaller um, you can highlight a whole row and say change the size of the words um, for the point size or you can make them bold. Um, and then we'll do a, a quick equation. Let's say um, I'm just going to type some random numbers in here just to show you uh, what this can do. 86, 9, 20, 55. Okay, so here we have a list of numbers. Uh, if I wanted to add these up, I could whip out a calculator and add them up, but a much easier way is to actually go on here and this uh, I can click this little thing here that's um, it gives you an option of what the different uh, equations are or you can type in equals sum. And I'm actually going to high oops, excuse me. So when you click this, I'll click sum, and you'll notice it automatically is trying to uh, move my cursor in there, and I can select what I want to add and hit enter, and it will automatically add this up. Even better, I can copy and paste, and it will automatically uh, move my equations. You'll see the equation up here says B2 to B6, so column B, row 2 to B6. So whatever I add here is automatically going to be added up. You can see how in a business where you have a lot of numbers, this makes accounting so much easier when you have the computer add up the numbers and you just have to make sure that you typed in the right numbers. Um, and then you can do grand totals. Again, I'll do a sum of these three and hit enter and there we go. So I can uh, do all sorts of really neat tricks with these different equations and if you want to learn more about spreadsheets you can just go out and look up Excel equations or spreadsheet equations and there are some pretty great ones um, where you can do all sorts of uh, math and functions. Okay moving on <clears throat> I'm going to show you flowcharts. Now flowcharts are used when you want to draw a diagram to try to explain how a process works or explain your idea. Uh, the most commonly used in offices is Microsoft Visio. Uh, OpenOffice has one called Draw that's pretty much the same. And Google also has one called Google Drawing. 
Um, I found one even better that I like online called Lucid Charts, and I'm going to actually show you an example of that one. Again, these flowcharts all really work the same the way the programs are. Uh, the key features is that you can use boxes and shapes um, so you can draw out your different ideas. Uh, you can format the text so you can get bolds and uh, italics and different fonts. Uh, you can draw lines to connect your different boxes and you can add backgrounds to make uh, your flowchart look pretty. <laughs> so let's uh, show you again an example. I'm going to pull up Lucid Charts. Um, as I said, this is one of my favorites for using online. And we're going to create a new document just so I can show you what it looks like. Whenever you create a new flowchart, it will ask you what type of flowchart you want. And I'm just going to show you a simple blank flowchart um, and show you the basics of how this works. So I'm going to just say name of document. I don't have a name for it. So first off, uh, you would want to drag and drop and put a title on here. So title of my flowchart. And again, I can go in here and I can set the point size and make this however big and fancy as I want. Um, and I can drag it and resize it. Uh, usually we'll start with a uh, little box here. It's our process. And let's say um, my first process is to create a list of things to do. And then I will actually put in the different things uh, that I want to do um, where I could put in a uh, go running. And maybe I need to put a list of tasks, the things I'm going to do to go running. So I need to put on running shoes. And uh, I'll need to decide where to run. Run. Uh, maybe I want to put the process to say this little di diamond here is for questions. Is it cold outside? And then I will put what happens if it is and what happens if it isn't. So let's see here, put jacket on. And if it's warm, I will put shorts on. Okay, now let's uh, connect some lines here. Um, there's actually a couple different ways you can connect lines. Um, this program is really nice because you can just drag and drop what you want. Um, some programs you have to actually go up and pick your line tool. Uh, so I'm going to go down here. And notice I can just draw my arrows like so. And then, uh, oops, these are actually backwards. Is it cold outside? Yes. And if it's not cold outside, no. Now the biggest thing this is used for is actually to uh, draw out um, software, to how software is going to work, what happens when you click on a certain button, or uh, what software talks to, or if we draw system charts to show all the different computer systems, and what data they send back and forth. We'll usually do that in a flowchart such as this. Um, and I'll show you uh, just real quick. Here's a couple flowcharts I've made. I, I do uh, music composition, so I kind of drew out a little flowchart of um, one way that I come up with music. And uh, So I just kind of show the process of how I come up with things. Um, and this really writing down the process and drawing it helps you see where you could make improvements, what you can add, um, how you can make things better. Um, one of the best ways to drive change at a company. All right, let's move on. Uh, now I want to show you about presentations, uh, like what I'm using now to show you this uh, slideshow, which is Microsoft PowerPoint, again, uh, the industry standard. OpenOffice, of course, has their own called Presentation, and Google has one also called Presentation, very uh, creative names. Um, the key features of a uh, PowerPoint presentation type program is that you can do a slideshow such as this, um, you can also do text formatting. You can uh, animate things. You can embed images and tables. Um, you can add backgrounds. Uh, really makes a nice uh, little slideshow here for when you want to teach or when you want to show a uh, group of uh, your coworkers or your executives um, reports or analyzations of your company or whatever um, they're asking you to do. Now uh, I'm going to pop over here into PowerPoint just to show you real quick what this looks like. Now PowerPoint um, really is a lot, it's a lot like Word where you can just go in here and type in what you need. Um, you can 
Uh, let's see, why don't I create a new one? Just go blank presentation. When you create one of these, first it will pull up a title. Here's my title. Uh, your subtitle, subtitle here. There we go. And when you want to add a new uh, slide, you just go over here, right click, say new slide, and I can go back and forth. Um, this is my first slide. And then here I can add my pictures or words or graphs, whatever you need to add. Um, one of the best ways to dress up your um, picture is, is your presentation is to pick one of these templates um, <clears throat> so that it will make your presentation real fancy. Uh, you can also do all sorts of different formatting to animate uh, things here. We have animation slides that will bring the words out or bring the, uh, the colors out as you change screens. So there's a lot of really uh, powerful features in here to play with. Um, PowerPoint really is a lot more powerful than the OpenOffice and the Google versions um, with all these really cool tools that they've added into uh, Office 2012 uh, where you can uh, just change your setup or, or do all these neat animations with just